In this video, I'm going to show you how I rebuilt the hydraulic pump on this International 300 utility tractor backhoe loader. I just got this tractor and it failed on me the first day. It worked fine empty, but as soon as I put any pressure on it, it blew the main seal. So within the first 20 minutes of doing anything, we already have a problem. We're going to start by removing the hydraulic pump. This hydraulic fluid's definitely seen some better days and needs to be replaced anyway. But that's the easy part. After we get this pump off the tractor, we're going to need to take the entire thing apart. I knew none of this would be easy before we even started. Unfortunately, none of this hydraulic equipment was from the factory. It's all aftermarket. And even after I split the case, there were no usable numbers on anything, including the main seal that needed to be replaced. So we're in the dark about everything and have to figure it out. But after driving around to a few different hydraulic shops with everything disassembled in a bucket, I was finally able to find a seal that fit. Now here comes the fun part. Let's take this thing apart. Hope you guys enjoy. We got it split. Next we need to get these two gears out of here. The hydraulic gear pumps work by converting low pressure hydraulic fluid coming in into high pressure hydraulic fluid going out. Now there is another indentation for another retaining ring on here. Some of these have the retaining ring. And in that case, if you have to knock it out, it's going to take the plate, the needle bearing cage, as well as the snap ring and all the needle bearings. But you might find people who've repaired it in the past will just leave it like this and it'll end up coming out a lot easier because it doesn't have that in there. Unfortunately, the seal is coming out in pieces, which makes sense why it was leaking. Nothing else is coming out, so I'm going to have to use the press to break it free. Now we're going to need to use a puller to get the bearing sleeve out. There it is. Finally got everything out. Here's all the pieces.
Now that everything's taken apart, we can bring the pump housing and all its parts to some hydraulic shops to see if we can find a seal that'll work. Now that we got that figured out, let's put everything back together with our new sealing gaskets. These first two pieces get reused. And this is our new seal with numbers. So if it ever needs to be replaced again, at least now we know. Now we're just prepping and assembling the seal and coating everything with hydraulic fluid before we put it back in. Got it all pushed in nice and ready to go. Just have to snap the metal cover, stack up the other parts, and move on to reassembling the needle bearing. It's a pain getting them all back in between the cage and the sleeve, but if you take your time and space them out as you go, it'll all go back nicely into its place. Just lift up the cage a little bit and you can slide them right in between the cage and the bearing sleeve. Now that they're all back in, we'll just lube it up with some hydraulic fluid, snap on the cover, and our old needle roller bearings reassembled and ready to go. Now let's get all this stuff out of here so we can get the pump housing case in here. Then we can clean it, lube it, drop in the new seal, the spring, and the needle bearing so it'll all be set up and ready to go to be pressed back in. I don't have any fancy press tools currently, so I just use a socket the same size as the needle bearing sleeve. It's important to make sure this part's centered and everything's lined up. That looks great. Finally making some progress. Now let's get this back in the bin so we can do the outer seal on the other side. It's the same process as the other. Clean it, lube it, hand fit it in, then press it in. Now that the seals and bearings are pressed in, it's time to put it back in the vise to get it lubed up with hydraulic fluid so we can reinstall the brass plate. It's gear time, baby, and we're finally ready to put the first gear back in. Just gotta coat it with hydraulic fluid, tap it in until it hits the bearing sleeve, then take it to the press and press it in the rest of the way. That's always cool to watch. Nice and smooth, finally getting somewhere. Now we're gonna flip it to the other side and get it back in the vise so we can put the retaining ring clip on the outside part of the shift. Now back to the gear side. We're gonna get some hydraulic fluid on there, but this shorter one just drops right in. No pressing needed. Just have to get the gasket lubed up and set in place, and we're ready to put the cover back on. Gotta get a little hydraulic fluid on here, then we're going to put the cover back on and seal it up by threading in and tightening down the four bolts. Then we can finally reinstall it back on the tractor to test it out. Now we're finally done, but first we got to replace these old stripped out bolts with nice new ones before reinstalling it on the tractor. Now we're ready to put it back on the tractor. We're going to grease up the shaft inlet and the shaft before reinstalling it. Each time I push it moves the inlet back. There used to be set screws but they're all stripped out. So I'm going to put these two pieces of wood behind here to hold it in place. Now it'll stay in place while I'm putting the first few bolts in. Now we just have to get the rest of the bolts on and tighten everything up. One more to go.
Now that all four bolts are snugged in there, let's get them nice and tightened up. Nice and tight, almost ready to test out. Just have to spray it down and clean it up real quick. Then we can get the first hydraulic line threaded on the pump. Finally onto the last line. This was already cleaned up. Just have to thread it on and tighten it down. Now we just have to fully tighten the first line and we're good to go. Bam, finally finished. Looks great. Now let's fire this baby up and test it out. Always sounds nice hearing this thing start up. Now let's look at the pump and see if there's any leaks. Nice. Looks good. No leaks anywhere. Now let's test it out a little further by putting it under some more pressure by moving the hydraulic pieces around to fully open and close the cylinders to make sure there's no leaks once it's under more pressure. Everything's good, nothing leaked. No leaks or issues anywhere. Everything's working perfectly. It really feels good to have this job done. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.